it all has to do with how that was wired. Um, oftentimes what we see is the manufacturer that made your RV will put a battery disconnect in so that on your way out the door or whatever in storage, turn off the battery disconnect. And what that's doing is that's disabling the battery from the RV. Okay, so that means if you plugged it into shore power, for example, and your converter was working, if your battery disconnect was off, then your battery was not being charged. And at the same time, if your battery had juice in it and you had your disconnect off, it's not talking to the RV. Typically, that's what we find on the RV as it comes off out of the factory. Now, oftentimes we see people that would install the solar in their RV and they put their solar array up on their roof, they go through their charge controller, and yes, you fuse all your things, but you go through your charge controller, and then a lot of times they connect it directly to the battery. And so if they did not run that through that battery disconnect, um, then it's very possible that even with your battery disconnect off, if those solar panels are getting sunlight and your solar charger's on, then it's going to charge your batteries that way. So it, it really all depends on how it was designed, how it was wired. I know when we do solar installs, that's one of the questions we consult with our customers on is, okay, what do you expect to happen when you do this and when you do that and how you do this and how you do that? Um, because all that could be designed with switches. Uh, it is possible when you're to wire it so that when you do your battery disconnect, it kills everything. Um, solar, everything. So that's what I meant about the meter. So take your meter, put it on there, put it on DC and um, plug it in. And, and the thing with the battery though, if you plug it into shore power, you're gonna probably get around 13.4 to 13.6 volts right there. And um, then if you were to take it off of shore power, uh, you might still see a little bit of surface charge there, but over a period of time, it will bleed off a little bit and kind of settle around 12 ish, you know, 12.3-ish. Um, so that's what you would expect to see on a healthy battery system. But if your solar is on, you still might see the 13.3 even after an hour or two of the battery being off. When I do solar installs, I fuse between the solar array and the controller, and I fuse between the controller and the battery. So that's two separate fuses where the controller, charge controller is kind of in an island between two fuses. I do that because if there's a lightning bolt or something that all of a sudden these solar panels get all this light, I don't want it to like the light to just blow up the controller. So it's extra little safety step that I do. Um, but another thing that it does is there are, you could pull that fuse and that pulling the fuse from the solar array down to your controller would basically kill it that way too. And then you could also put a disconnect at that point. So lots of different ways. Don't get me started on how to wire these things. Anyway, there, there's my thoughts on that.